Hello, and thank you for watching. This is Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano, and this is video number two in a short series on Chopin's C-sharp minor nocturne. And this video is gonna focus on rhythm. And the way the video will work is we're just gonna go chronologically through the piece. So just a few things before we get to the information itself. I am using this edition from Henley, which I've had for a long time. And in my score, we've got a repeat here, and then this would be measure three, four, five. The first thing we will address in my score will be measure five. Item number two is there's lots of versions of this piece. So I actually have two versions in my own book here. So what I'll be doing is presenting the most common rhythms that occur, but you might encounter other editions or other versions of certain measures. Item number three is there's a lot of triplets in this piece. And so I just want you to be aware that there's a different font for the three that means triplet and the three that means use finger three. So the ones that are in italics I've circled in red, that means it's a triplet subdivision. The one that is in regular font means use finger three. If you're playing this piece, you need to have just a basic idea of subdivisions. So this circle here helps show visually the breakdown of how the notes relate to each other. In short, we've got quarter note, upper left corner of the circle, then two eighth notes relative to the quarter note, upper right, four sixteenth notes, bottom right, and eight thirty-second notes is the bottom left. Probably the main rhythm I want to make sure that you feel very confident with is a two against three rhythm. And I actually have a whole video on this if you want to really get into it. You'll see the first instance of three against two in beat four on my measure five. So the right hand has those three notes grouped together with the italic three on the bottom, which means that that's a triplet. And then the left hand has just two notes. So if you look at this diagram, in order to figure out exactly where the notes hit, we have to find the common denominator. So three notes times two notes is six. So you see I've written one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we have a three note subdivision, we have one, two for note number one in the right hand, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, in terms of the timing. Left hand is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What I found that works really well with my students is instead of saying one, two, three, four, five, six, we just say ta, tiki, ta. So it would be ta, tiki, ta, ta. So let's just get started. We'll jump in, measure five. There's two versions of these two measures. Version one does not have a tie. You play the C sharp again. Okay. Version two has the C sharp tied and it also has a D sharp in the left hand. So version two sounds like this. Either one of those versions is very widely used. So basically it depends on either the music you're learning or which one you like better. With regards to fingering, I'm gonna give you maybe two or three fingerings. Just figure out which works for you and then write it in your music so you're always doing it that way. The left hand pretty much all the time is gonna be five, three, one, two. So we'll start with measure five. Fingering for the right hand, I'm gonna give you two options. Option one is three on that high C sharp, three, three, two, three, two, one, and then switch to three, two, three, two, one, two. Or you could do four, four, three, four, three, two, three. All right, so now let's go through the rhythm. So the way I'll do it is each measure, I'll do a slow one and a fast one. The slow one will help you get it together and the fast one will be more like you would hear in context, okay? So here's the slow one. I'm gonna just use the three, two, one fingering. We've got a half note in the right hand, four eighth notes in the left hand. So the five and the three will go together. One and two and then we've got three and that 16th note will come evenly before beat four. Three E and a four. Then we've got our ta tiki ta thing. Ta, ti, ki, ta. So here's how beats three and four sound. Three and four and one. 
Now quickly. So the other version with the tie will sound like this. So on to measure 13, looks complicated, but once you understand it, it's actually really nice to put together. Left hand fingering, five, three, one, two, and those notes stay the same, so that's all you have to worry about. We're gonna have two versions of this, and I will show them both to you, and I have two fingerings. The fingering only differs on the very first four notes. We're way at the highest C sharp of the piano, so the fingering is gonna be three, four, two, one, then cross with four, four, three, two, one, cross with three, three, two, one, cross with four, cross with three. So you're crossing with four when you have a G sharp, you're crossing with three when you have a C sharp. Four. Okay. Or you could use four, five, three, one for the first four notes, then the same. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different versions that I have of this, this measure. Version one is going to have a triplet for the first two. So, ta, tiki, ta, ta, tiki, ta. And then we have two sixteenth notes and then three sixteenth notes. Three. What that little three means is that there's three sixteenth notes in the space of two. So the way I actually like to practice something like this to really get it good is put the metronome on an eighth note. So that's the left hand. And then just go from beat one to beat two. Just get there. Ta, tiki, ta, ta. One and a two. going to do the same thing, beat two, stop on beat three. Two and a three. Ta, tiki, ta, ta. Then I put those two together. So the left hand is going to be with the clicks on the metronome and the right hand is filling in. And then if we start now on beat three, we're gonna do beat three, stopping on beat four. So two right hands notes, three, stop. Now let's start at the beginning of the measure. Here we go. See how the amounts of notes change with the left hand based on if they're 16th notes or 16th note triplets, etc. Okay, now let's just add beat four. Two groups of three. We're gonna start on finger four. We've just had a crossover. We have triple it, triple it, stop. Okay, let's do the whole measure. Crossed, two, three, three, three. And here's how that sounds more quickly. So here's the other version of measure 13, and I'll use the alternative fingering because it is written in there. So we'll have together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right. Now, see what happens here on beat three? Instead of splitting it into two notes, three notes, what this version has is just a five. So I'm just going to show you my little chart to show you exactly how they fit together. But really, you just have to feel the group of five in the right hand and then feel the group of two in the left hand. So the right hand, again, we'll do the common denominator. Two times five is ten. So the right hand's going to come on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the left hand's going to come on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in order to feel this together, put your metronome on a quarter note and just feel how those five notes squeeze into a quarter note. So 
one, two, three, four, five, stop. And then the left hand is one and stop. One and stop. So you just do it a few times, hands separately. how it sounds quickly. Now we're to measure 16. Basically what we need to address is playing those four 30 second notes. They're really, really fast and they go with one left hand note. Okay, so fingering could either have two, three, one, two, three, four, five, or one, three, Two, one, two, three, five. Left hand fingering is going to be five, three, one, two, five, three, one, two. All right. You might be wondering what that little X is on beat three in the left hand. So we're in the key of C sharp minor. So F sharp is in our key signature. So we start with F sharp, D sharp, A, F sharp. Now that little X means to sharp this F one more time. So we're going to move that F sharp up one. So F sharp. F double sharp, and then it's going to lead up. It gives you a little chromatic bass line. All right, now let's refer back to the wheel with the subdivisions. So we're going to be playing a group of four 32nd notes, so an eighth note's worth on the and of two. So you'll have with finger two, one, two, three, four, five. And that's how I would practice it. So moving forward, we measure 19, measure 21 in some books. Um, basically here, we're just doing the three against two. With regards to the fingering, the left hand's gonna be five, three, one, two, five, three, one, two. Right hand, just one fingering option. One, two, three, under, one, two, three, four, three, two. So let's just look at those two against threes. We'll start with measure 19 and 20. We've got quarter note together. Two sixteenth notes, so together, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together. Ta, tiki, ta, ta, or one and a two. So now practicing that, put that metronome, I'm putting it on 72, by the way. So this is eighth notes. One, two notes, two notes, stop. Let's do that again. Now beat three to beat four. Let's put those together. Same thing here. Together, right, right, together, 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 right, left, right, together. Ta, tiki, ta, ta. Four, three and a four. Let's do both of those. I'll do them with the metronome slowly and then I'll do it quickly without. Now a little bit more quickly. You really want to spend the time to get those three against twos because you want the melody to never feel like it's stopping or stagnant. Okay, so moving forward, now we're on measure 23, same rhythm. Two options for fingering here. Two, three, one, two, three, stay there. Move up to three. Or you could do two, three, one, two, three, one, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, one, three, four, three, one. All right, so this is the exact same rhythm, just different notes. 
um, left hand, five, three, one, two, five, three, one, two. So slowly, we're gonna have together, eighth notes, then two sixteenths in the right hand, together, right, two eighth notes, together, together, here's our two against three, ta, tiki, ta, or one, here together together right together 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 right left right together together right left right together ta tiki ta ta three and a four so here's how it sounds with the metronome I'm kind of pounding it out right now as you get the notes. That's what you want to do. Pound it out, get it in your finger so you're not skimming and feeling uncertain. And then you can do the sotto voce. Lots of people use the soft pedal in this. It sounds really pretty with soft pedal. Or without soft pedal, super, super soft. So get it under your fingers with a three against two first. Um, one other thing I want to mention is some versions in measure 24, the right hand is a little bit different. It doesn't go down to the C sharp, it goes just to an F sharp, so it sounds like this. So you'll hear instead of sometimes. Moving ahead, we've got another three against two in my measure 29. Right hand, basically there's not a lot of fingering variety here. The first part's gonna be three, four, three. Here's our double sharp again, F double sharp. So you're gonna actually play the key that feels like G. Three, four, three, two, one. And then some people switch to three, two, one. Or you can just play one two times in a row. You could have three, four, three, two, So that's the fingering. We start with the left hand. We have five, three, two, one, five, three, one, or five, two, one there. That's a place where it's a little bit different. So we'll have the two against three. Together, right, left, right, together, together, three, and four, and. So after the triplet, everything is very even and strict. Ta, tiki, ta. going to sound like this. All right, and then a little faster. Okay, so now we're moving to this unique middle section that's a little bit faster, and there's all sorts of versions of it. And so the transition actually to this section also can be a little bit confusing. In some versions, you have a measure of two followed by a measure of three. In other versions, you'll have a measure of five, four. In other versions, it will stay four, four, but squeeze it together on the last beat. So I will show you all of those versions. In terms of the fingering, there's just one fingering. It's one, five, one, two, three. There's that double sharp again. Five, one, two, three. Left hand's gonna be five, three, two, one. Five, three, two, one, two. So there is one rhythm we haven't gone over, and that's four against three. You're gonna see it right here. And the left hand has a triplet, and then the right hand has an eighth note followed by a 16th rest followed by a 16th note. That means it's a subdivision of four because that first eighth note is equal to two 16th notes. So let's see, one E and a uh, two. And then the left hand at that moment has a triplet. I'm just going to show you the diagram for the four against three. We've got a subdivide to 12. 
four subdivisions on the right hand, three in the left hand. So the left hand's gonna come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one. Right hand's gonna come on one, two, three, four, five, six, because it's an eighth note, okay? Then seven, eight, nine is a rest, and 10, 11, 12 is that high G sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one. But really the way I teach this to my students is that G sharp, that's the 16th note, it's just a pickup. It just goes to that B sharp. Let's try version one of this. I'm gonna put the metronome on eighth notes. Okay, let's just do the left hand first so you feel it. One and two and one and the two and three and. One more time. One and two and one alone. One and two and one and two and three and. So it kind of stretches out at the end. Now together, together, left, right, together, left, right, one and a, two and three and. Here's that one quickly. Okay, so here's version two. Basically, it's the same exact thing as the first version. It just looks different. Instead of being a two, four plus three, four, they've just written it as a five, four, so five beats. Um, and then there's a fermata on the B sharps, but it's gonna sound exactly the same. So slowly. One and two and three and a four and five and new section. All right, so then finally is the version I learned from, instead of having beats four and five be a dotted quarter with an eighth note, in my version, it was just another dotted eighth sixteenth. So it stayed in four, four. One and two and three and a four and. One and two and three and a four. So I don't know which version you are looking at, but know that there's lots of options for that transition. Okay, here's measure 46. So same notes and same fingering, just a little bit of discrepancies on the rhythms going down. I'm gonna show you three different ways. So the first way is going to be triplet on beat one. So ta, tiki, ta, ta, or one, and a two so together right left right and then we've got two eighth notes together cross with four together and then four groups of right hand triplets so three notes in the right hand for every one of the left hand three 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 big jump in the left hand way down to that f sharp Here's how that sounds quickly. Okay. Or you could have it the same as the first one. Ta, tiki, ta, ta, tiki, ta, two notes, three, three, three. Exactly the same as the first time when you did that. Or you could do exactly the same as the first time if you did the first time with the five. So. Okay, moving to the last one. Lots of versions of this. I have four versions of this actually. So let's do right hand fingering first. Fingering number one. Three, four, three, two, three, one. Two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, three, switch to five. Or starting on two, two, three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, three. Switching to four. Or that fingering with slightly different at the end. So two, three, two, one, two, one. Two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one. 
So instead of one, two, three, four, three, one, three, one, three, one. Left hand again is just five, three, one, two, five, three, one, two. Okay. So versions one and two are going to be the same. They just look a little bit different. All right. So in the visual version one, instead of three, three, it has a six. So that means those six notes are in the space of four, but it's exactly the same as a three against two. So it's going to be together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together. Ta, tiki, ta, ta, tiki, ta, together. One, and a, two, and a, together. Okay. Beat three. We've got triplet, then two notes. And you'll see a couple different things here. In version one, you're gonna have some staccati, triple it, two notes, and then again, you see another six. Really, it's two groups of three, and you'll see it written both ways. In version one, it has the eight VA symbol. In version two, it just keeps going up with no eight VA. It's the same notes, all right? So you'll be on finger two, three notes, three notes together. Three right hand, three right hand together. So let's practice this beat by beat, but I'm going to do beats one and two, stopping on three first. Stop. Now beats three, stopping on beat four. Do it again. Let's put all those together. to the next beat one three notes three three together let's start on beat three do beats three and four let's do the whole measure whole measure okay and let me do that quickly Our version three, we've got the same exact thing, except on beat three, it's a group of five instead of a group of three plus two. So we would have. So a little bit more smooth. Together, right, right, left, together. So quickly, that sounds like this. And then I'm just gonna point out version four. I don't really hear this that often, but there's a version where you have three notes, three notes, then five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So it leaves out a note instead of, see how there's one note missing? So. out the E on the way up. I don't hear that one that often, but it does exist. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I have lots of videos like this, so please subscribe to my channel if you like this sort of in-depth piano teaching. Also, I have a PayPal. If you feel like this helped you and want to make a small donation, please look in the description. All the information is there. And I hope to see you on video number three, which is going to try and help you with these scales at the end. If you've watched some of my videos before, you know I love to know where you're from. So please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.